The result is this, the delusion that Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11, supporting al-Qaeda, uh, only uh, right after 9-11 uh, happened, a very small number of Americans believed that to be the case. They thought it was bin Laden. Three months before we invaded Iraq, that number had gone up to 28%. Okay, so Americans were really starting to believe that maybe Saddam Hussein had something to do with this. Two years after we had invaded Iraq, uh, a majority of Americans felt that Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. Three years after we were in the war in Iraq, a journalist asks George Bush a question and catches him off guard. He asks him what Saddam Hussein had to do with 9-11. You're going to be surprised at the answer. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing. It had nothing to do with the attack on the World Trade Center. So why, Mr. Bush, did we go to war? We, I thought you said we were going to take the war to those that attacked us. So he didn't have nuclear weapons, and he had nothing to do with 9-11. Two very important delusions that took us to war, in effect. Let's go to propaganda technique number two. These get a little harder. This is called repeated affirmations. You say a, fa a false thing over and over and over again, and have authoritative voices also say 2 plus 2 is 5, and you keep that up with the governor, the senators, the president, and everybody saying the same falsehood over and over again, and pretty soon it gets assimilated by the population and is believed. The greatest uh, propagandist of all time, probably, was Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister. This is what he said. Propaganda must therefore always be essential and repetitious. It must confine itself to a few points and repeat them over and over. Here's Rachel Maddow. You want to see how bad it's gotten? Someone put this together from just one episode of her show from last March. And I'm going to play it for you. Here we go. Vladimir Putin, Russia, 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 hate, Russia, 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 Putin, Russia's, Russia, 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 Russian, 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 Russia, Russia, Moscow, Moscow, Russia, Russian, pro Russian, Russian, Russia, Russian, 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 the Russians, Russian, Russian, Russia. Now, I actually found a quotation of George Bush that floored me because it says almost exactly the same thing. See, in my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over to, over to kind of catapult the propaganda. George Bush. That's <clears throat> what repeated affirmations is. Now, before we get into that, as a psychologist, I want to explain one idea to you, a delusion. A delusion is a false premise. It's a false idea about the world. Example, uh, you have a cat, or this guy has a cat, and he sees the cat goes over to the neighbor's house, and the, he sees the neighbor feeding the cat something. Maybe it's a treat, but he thinks the neighbor is trying to poison his cat, and he's giving his cat poison. And he doesn't like it, and it irritates him, and it bothers him. And a few months later, his cat dies. And he's quite sure that the cat died of some toxic poison that was given to the cat by the neighbor. So he takes the cat for an autopsy. Nothing comes back. Died of natural causes. He doesn't believe it. He doesn't believe the inspectors. He's looking for weapons of mass destruction. And he has taken his cat again for another inspection. And again it comes back. Sorry, um natural causes, no toxins in, in the blood of this cat. So he um, is not satisfied, walks over to the, uh, the neighbor's house, confronts him, and shoots him, and kills him. Well, this man is obviously mentally ill, right? And secondly, uh, he's suffering from a paranoid delusion. So we will return to this concept later. But so, uh, we have collective delusions, an entire not just individuals who suffer from them, nations and people have false premises about the world. Let's take a couple here. The first delusion that Americans suffered from, not everybody, but a lot, that Saddam Hussein orchestrated or had something to do with the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. And the second delusion is that Saddam Hussein was developing nuclear weapons.
Well, we all know that number two is false. That was a delusion. He wasn't developing nuclear weapons. Let's take a look at the first delusion that Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. So the lie that substantiates the delusion is that Mohammed Atta, it is alleged by the Bush administration, he was a 9-11 hijacker. He went to Prague on April 9th, 2001, before 9-11, and he met with an Iraqi intelligence official there. This was very critical. Everybody was mystified. Why is George Bush attacking Saddam Hussein when we all know it was bin Laden? Why is he going there instead of there? Well, part of the case was that Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11, and that case was being built and being built and being built. Now, the truth of the matter is that Mohammed Atta never went to Czechoslovakia or Prague uh, he was in Sarasota, Florida, through the whole period of time. He was making calls on his cell phone on April 6th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. He used his ATM card and was photographed on April 4th. He just never went to Czechoslovakia. That was a complete falsehood or a lie or whatever. But it was, it was essential to the Bush administration to make the case that Iraq had something to do with 9-11. Number two, quote, the intelligence community did not confirm that Mohammed Atta met an Iraqi intelligence officer in Prague in 2001, as the vice president repeatedly claimed, unquote. Through his participation and instance in the breathtaking scope of this deception, the president has used the highest office of trust to wage a campaign of such a campaign of deception of such sophistication as to deliberately subvert the national security interests of the United States. His dishonesty set the stage for the loss of more than 4,000 United States service members, injuries to tens of thousands of our soldiers, the loss of more than one million innocent Iraqi civilians. So um, you have to repeat the propaganda this way. So it was repeated. Uh, George Bush, this is a man who has got connections with Al-Qaeda. He's talking about Saddam Hussein. He's a threat, uh, Saddam Hussein, because he's dealing with Al-Qaeda. Really. Uh, we're taking the fight to those that attacked us. Well, uh, Saddam Hussein didn't attack us. Cheney. He did meet with a senior official of the Iraqi intelligence service in Czechoslovakia last April, several months before the attack. Not true, Mr. Cheney. Uh, the 9-11 Commission said that wasn't true. The Czech police said that wasn't true. And guess what? The FBI had Mohammed Atta's cell phone records. They knew he was in Sarasota, Florida. He never was there. So... If you keep repeating it over and over again, as they were doing just before we went to war with Iraq, it starts to settle into the national psyche. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of Al-Qaeda. There was a relationship between Iraq and Al-Qaeda. Saddam, Al-Qaeda, Saddam, Al-Qaeda, Saddam, Al-Qaeda, Saddam, 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 Saddam Al-Qaeda. It is only a matter of time before terrorist states, armed with weapons of mass destruction, develop the capability to deliver those weapons to U.S. cities, where we're giving you our facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members... So, uh, as we're developing our, uh, a certain war hysteria and getting ready to invade, um, Powell, Colin Powell, speaks in front of the UN PowerPoint presentation. People went nuts over it. They said, wow, what a great presentation. He made the case that Saddam Hussein had, was developing nuclear weapons, that Saddam Hussein had something to do with uh, uh, al-Qaeda, and so forth. Um, and today, uh, well, here, here's the reaction to Colin Powell's speech just before we invaded.
first of all, it should be noted that Colin Powell's speech to the United Nations was theater, a masterful theater, effective theater at the time. Um, you know, here's a man who has tremendous credibility, uh, who presents himself to the Security Council, to the American people, to the international public, and stares the camera in the eye and says he knows Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Leading. Uh, today, Colin Powell says that was the lowest point in his entire political and military career. He regrets that speech. He thinks that he was wrong, and uh, he's sorry for it. He's one of the few people in the administration to really come out and apologize. I'm Ray McGovern, a 27-year veteran of the Central Intelligence Agency. Why did you lie to get us into a war that was not necessary and that has caused these kinds of casualties? Rut row. First of all, I, I haven't lied. Oh, he didn't lie. All right, well, that settles it, everybody. There's pound cake in the back. We can all have a nice time. And uh, It appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not. See? <laughs> he never said he knew where they were. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south, and north, so somewhat. So the Secretary of Defense caught in a contradiction about weapons of mass destruction. Surely that will be a big story. How much of an axe do you have to grind with Secretary Rumsfeld? But he wasn't just any heckler. Were you nervous? Tucker, I resent the word heckler. I'd like you to take that back. Okay, I'm not taking it back. Donald yes. Rumsfeld encouraged whoever, I think, had their hands on you at the time to let you stay there. Does he get any credit for that today? Isn't it enough that he was wrong and had bad judgment? Why does he have to be a liar, too? Well, you know, that's the question you'd have to direct to him. But won't. Now... It wasn't just the administration spreading and repeating the falsehoods. It was going across the entire country. Okay, these are the main war propagandists who were writing columns, appearing on television, repeatedly saying the same thing over and over again. Who would tell us the truth? The rallying around the president, around the flag, and around the troops clearly has begun. And we're going to win! You really have to be with the troops to understand that kind of adrenaline rush that they get. I just want you to know, I think Navy SEALs rock. The pictures you're seeing are absolutely phenomenal. When my country is at war, uh, I want uh, my country to win. Iraqi opposition has faded in the face of American power. What you're watching here is truly historic television and journalism. It was absolutely electrifying. They actually had to strap me in with my camera at the back of the plane. An awesome synchronized killing machine. There is an inherent bias in the coverage of the American press in general. Am I slanted in bias? You damn well bet I am. And proud of it. So uh, the result is this. The delusion that Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11 and supporting Al-Qaeda. Uh, only uh, right after 9-11 uh, happened, a very small number of Americans believed that to be the case. They thought it was bin Laden. Three months before we invaded Iraq, that number had gone up to 28%. Okay, so Americans were really starting to believe that maybe Saddam Hussein had something to do with this. Two years after we had invaded Iraq, uh, a majority of Americans felt that Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. Now, now, if you were a regular PBS viewer, uh, and that's where you got the majority of your news, you didn't believe this. A very small minority of PBS uh, people got sucked into this delusion. If you watched Fox News, on the other hand, um, the, the figures are astonishing. Almost 60% of Fox viewers believed that Saddam Hussein was developing nuclear weapons and had something to do with 9-11. And I read one study that showed um, that figure went up to almost 80%. So, uh, three years after we were in the war in Iraq, a journalist asks George Bush, a question and catches him off guard. He asks him what Saddam Hussein had to do with 9-11. You're going to be surprised at the answer. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing. 
it had nothing to do with the attack on the World Trade Center. So why, Mr. Bush, did we go to war? We, I thought you said we were going to take the war to those that attacked us. So he didn't have nuclear weapons, and he had nothing to do with 9-11. Two very important delusions that took us to war, in effect. Now, three years into the war, a poll was done about uh, U.S. servicemen in so soldiers. Ninety percent of them felt that Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. Well, we have a major disconnect here. Okay. Now, there's a consequence of a delusion. The man who went and shot the guy who ha he thought poisoned his cat, he didn't think that that man had uh, two sons, that he had a wife, that he had a father. Grandpa lost his son. The sons lost their father. The wife lost her husband and became a widow. All of those things were not on the mind of the person who went over there and said, you poisoned my cat, boom, I'm going to kill you. Okay, so the consequences of a delusion are uh, pretty severe. Now, we killed 100,000 people. That's a consensus estimate. In my book, we go through a number of uh, Iraqi body counts and so forth. Some American professors say 600,000 were killed. Others say 86,000 were killed. It's a pretty good estimate that 100,000 people are the, pe the number of people that we killed. Now, if you look at that bald head of the guy in front, that's a Notre Dame stadium that has 100,000 people. That's what 100,000 people look like. Those stories are not told on American television. The Matrix is not paying attention to that. Every one of those people has a mother and a father and maybe a child uh, and a best friend, all of whom are traumatized to the extreme with their death. So here are some um, stuff that the dark side of his illusion is repression and denial. Jung calls this the shadow. These are things, these are not gruesome stories. They are, however, painful. The shadow is painful. What is repressed and denied is painful. This does not appear on American television. <laughs> So that's not the stuff that is reported on NBC News. But there are at least 100,000 such stories that are out there uh, that we are not conscious of. Uh, one more. So, that's a sad ending to a discussion of repeated affirmations.